Welcome back. Well, the market continues to be under pressure, but one stock which is flying away in trade today is definitely Lupin. Um, the stock reported a great set of numbers as far as uh, the U.S. sales is concerned. Plus, the commentary is quite exciting. In fact, we have the management with us on the show, Ms. Vinita Gupta, the CEO, Mr. Nilesh Gupta, the managing director, as well as Mr. Ramesh Swaminathan, executive director, global CFO and head corporate affairs. Um, Team, thank you so much for joining us, and it's really um, good to have you on ETNA today. First up, Vinita, let me start with you and ask you about the U.S. sales because U.S. sales recovery was the key highlight for the earnings this quarter, right? Mm-hmm. And if I have it right, the um, U.S. sales this quarter was around 159 million dollars. Mm-hmm. The question to you is: Is this revenue rate going to be sustainable? And what kind of demand trends you're seeing on the ground? Yeah, so uh, uh, shaping up well. I mean, um, you know, from uh, Q1 to Q2, uh, obviously we had guided towards the bounce back and and we saw it. But uh, also the uh, growth was bolstered by uh, our uh, growth in the respiratory franchise, albuterol in particular, grew extremely well um, into Q2. Um, and we also had a uh, uh, new product launch, a couple of new product launches, but Suprep, which was the largest uh, that uh, really helped us um, grow Q2. And um, into Q3, we see uh, you know, a larger contribution of Suprep, continued uh, performance of the respiratory franchise, and uh, um, you know, a continued uh, um, um, revenue um, you know, um, stabilization of the inline business. Um, in addition, you know, we have uh, closed the acquisition of uh, the Synovian assets, that um, uh, add to um, our generic side of the business as well as uh, you know um, um, some brand revenues. So that will also help uh, grow the U.S. revenues and profitability into Q3 and Q4. Right. A very good afternoon to you, Vinita Nilesh, as well as R- Ramesh Sharl on the other side. And Vinita, uh, coming to you once again, the Q2 sales, if you look at it, it was benefited by uh, Suprep and Albuterol. If you could tell us how much of these products contributed in the quarter one by this Q2 and what are your sales expectations going forward from these products? Yeah, we, we do not give uh, product-specific guidance on revenues. Um, needless to say that uh, the growth between uh, Q1 and Q2, um, a good part of it was uh, uh, Albuterol and stable base business and some Suprep, as I just mentioned. Okay, Vanita, so that was about the U.S. business. Let's shift focus and talk about the India business, which contributes almost 40% of the company's revenue. Now, that one witnessed muted growth. Ramesh, what's your outlook there? Um, is it likely to stay muted or at least we'll be seeing double-digit growth, let's say, in the second half of the year? The growth is definitely lower than what we would expect for India. Uh, we expected some improvement in Q2, which has not happened, um, um, but we do expect it to get better going forward. Our India this business grew 5.8% sequentially and 5% year on year. Um, but for the six months, the growth is still uh, very tepid. It's basically the market grew 3.3%, we grew 3.6%. So, so very slow. Um, you know, our lead therapies are cardiac, chronic, and respiratory. In the cardiac space, we we see we saw. Um, uh, sorry, cardiac diabetes and respiratory. Um, in the cardiac space, we saw sluggishness before, which is now you know over. We see that growth back to double-digit growth. Um, respiratory basically grew only the market and ours. We we grew only low single digit. Uh, we again see double-digit growth in the second half. Um, diabetes is the space where we continue to underperform. Uh, the market is slow and uh, and we're slower than the market. Um, primarily on count or genericization in the category of some of our lead products. Um, so we do see diabetes improving as well, but we see that taking a little bit more time. Um, but suffice to say all of this together, we should basically have second half at double digit growth um, over the previous year. Um, but for the whole year, you know, basically it'll be single digit growth. Next year, we should be back to solid double digit growth all over again. Right. Uh, that was about your India business, Ramesh. But let me move on and let me ask about the EBIT of margins. And if you look at it, it's recovered in the quarter gone by to around 10.5 to 11 percent. However, if you look at that number, it continues to be below the pre-COVID level. If you could tell us what are the levers that now you are seeing, which could actually help improve your margins further on? 
The first quarter results, as uh, Benita was also mentioning, was was were impacted because of the fact that we had taken a stock correction, um, and that uh, having been done, you know, uh, you know, the overall sales in America certainly perked up. Um, you know, we've had a tight leash on costs when it comes to um, the SJ and day spends, the workforce planning, uh, which is evident, in fact, insofar as the manpower lines are concerned, optimization on the R&D front, and, of course, newer products coming in. You know, so essentially, we have, uh, so, you know, the ramping up of uh, the products that we've already introduced, uh, plus newer products coming up, plus, of course, the acquisitions. All of this will help in actually ramping up uh, margins. So, uh, whilst it has stepped up this quarter, we expect uh, things to become much better in the quarters to come. Q3 better than Q2 uh, and, and the like. Um, so, uh, it is not, it's still not normalized to the levels that we would, ex- we would like it to, but, um, the efforts are on the, the, um, the top line growth as well as the, you know, the leash on cost. And that would certainly bring about the change that uh, we all desire. Okay, so that was about the margin picture. But Vinita, the approval for Spiriva was delayed a tad bit, right? If you can share with us what is the updated timeline on this product and what's the visibility on the other launch pipelines as well, especially in the U.S. geography? We have responded to all of uh, the agency's queries on uh, Spiriva and have requested uh, uh, a priority review to be able to get approval on eligible launch date later this fiscal year, and uh, we hope to be successful with that. Uh, We'll know in the next couple of weeks. So uh, Spiriva, of course, is a big growth driver for us in the the quarters to come, and and we are preparing for it. Other than Spiriva, we have uh, launched SuperApp, as I just mentioned, that will continue to grow into into Q3 and Q4. And uh, we have other product launches uh, out of uh, uh, Somerset, um, you know, Diazepam Gel, as well as um, into fiscal year uh, 24, we have Nascobal nasal spray, where uh, we have uh, exclusivity. We expect to launch mid uh, next year. Um, and then um, in the first quarter of uh, fiscal year 24, we also have Darunavir, uh, for which we have a tentative approval, as well as a launch date in the uh, first quarter of fiscal year 24 that we are getting ready to launch. So multiple new product launches um, helping drive growth in the U.S. as well as profitability. Um, so we look, we're very uh, optimistic in uh, growing our uh, U.S. business in the quarters to come. Vinita, let's talk about the pricing pressure, and that is uh, the most important factor that actually everyone's eyeing. And pricing pressure in the United States usually is cyclical. If you could talk to us about in which cyclical phase of pressure are we in when it comes to the pricing? The pricing pressures that we have seen in particular on the oral solid uh, portfolio, we have uh, worked pretty hard on trying to optimize um, you know, um, the P&L by either exiting products which did not make sense anymore or reducing cost on products where there have been significant efforts in uh, within the team to uh, improve um, our, our cost position and therefore the margins. So we do think the oral solids are getting to a point where um, um, you know we should uh, really see normalized level of price erosion, uh, not uh, excessive price erosion. And uh, the new product uh, launches then really help uh, drive uh, growth both in revenues as well as profitability. Okay, and lastly, just wanted to wrap up by talking about the API sales as well, because that continued to contract this quarter. What were the reasons behind the same? And going forward, will API continue to be sluggish, or at least there'll be some sort of improvement from here on? So I, I think in the, in the near term, our API business is really much more around the anti-infectives and cephalosporins. Um, uh, we still see slowness in that. We've seen some pickup, but we still see slowness in general on that. Um, I think there's a there's a much higher flu season that is anticipated, and that would actually help drive growth again in that segment. Um, but you know, basically, it's been a couple of years of of contracting sales as far as surplus products is concerned, which has been obviously a pain point for our API business. Um, in the longer term, we see great opportunities on the API side, uh, but I think we really have to build it out into world class capability, world class capacities, you know, right cost of goods. There is that entire story to be painted out. So I think there is an opportunity on the API side. Um, but I think in the near term, it's going to be shaped versus the bounce back of the flu season and the and the anti-infectives. We, we do see that happening um, in parts. Um, 
but I think it's still going to be slow for the next six months and, you know, hopefully things pick up after. Right. And uh, let's talk about the net debt. Now, for Lupin, the net debt has actually increased. If you could tell us what were the factors that led to this increase and where do you see the net debt levels by the end of FY23? Yeah, so um, it essentially because of the fact that we had, uh, you know, acquired some brands, uh, you know, in the first quarter and uh, uh, there was a dividends payout and the like. Uh, that's the uh, and of course we are still working on working capital optimization um, and there's not much of uh, fixed assets at play so to that extent uh, you know you would think that uh, with the accruals coming in things would only improve uh, there is of course a net debt position but it's a question of time if we get on to uh, much better levels than this uh, but of course we are also an acquisitive company and uh, as in the appropriate uh, proposition presents itself you'll be looking at that seriously enough So that was the management of looping sounded fairly confident that at least the India business will recover to double digits growth but can't say the same about the Nifty. It's now toying around that 18,000 mark and I think the intraday low for Nifty was below the 18,000 mark so we'll keep continuing um, to watch that before now slipping into very short.